How are you guys doing? Welcome to Grow with Porchlight. I'm Steve Shane, your friend and favorite real estate coach. Great to meet with you. Uh, today, we have the amazing, the incomparable Mark Pattison from Porchlight San Diego. Um, Mark, please tell us about us. Give us your 30-second highlight reel of who you are and what's going on with Porchlight. All right. So Mark Pattison, San Diego, California. I'm based uh, out of San Diego, but we have teams all over the place. I'm originally from Seattle. I hate the cold weather. I hate rain. And so I moved to Southern California, not knowing one person eight years ago. And now I'm one of the top teams here. Uh, number one team on units, first team to sell 500 homes in San Diego County in one year. And currently sitting around 711 and 439 million. So so, so, so some there. good numbers, some good numbers. Um, man, I have so many questions when we talk about that. Um, let's let's jump right into it. So when did you realize that you need to shift from being a single agent to running a team? I kind of fell into it. So, you know, building a team is not the easiest thing to do. I've had many renditions of my team, same as you have. You know, it's it's it looks easy from you're seeing from the social highlights. Uh, but so I, I was sitting at a conference and someone said, oh, I would love to start a team with you. Mind you, I had been a real estate agent for one year. I had had sold only one listing. Um, I represented a bunch of buyers. I think I had like 23 buyers under contract and, and closed. So altogether, I had done 24 sales and I was like, you know what? I feel like it's the right time to start a team, uh, <laughs> which I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Uh, and that's kind of how it started. It was really just like based off of being either dumb or naive or both. Uh, and that's how I launched my team. And, and we called it a different name at the beginning. Um, but six months after that, I, I started Porchlight. Awesome. Um, so I know you pretty well because you kind of, you mentor me, you're helping me grow Porchlight Florida. Um, you know, you're, you're giving me the framework to do this. Uh, you talked about the many iterations. What were those first hurdles that you hit that, you know, you couldn't really, that you needed help with? Yeah, so I had no idea what a leading indicator and a legging indicator was. So I would go um, definitely go by the book, Four Disciplines, or even just Google Four Disciplines Worksheet or just get an idea of it. But I was having my agents do a certain number of, like, I didn't even know what to have them do. So nowadays, instead of focusing on how many like sales a person can get, I'll focus on how many dials a person can get or how many conversations a person can get. Because if they can control those things, which they can, Mm -hmm. All the other stuff will happen. And if the other stuff's not happening, there's one of two things. Either they're lying that they're doing the leading indicators or their skills suck. So if you have them in the office and they're calling and you hear the conversations, you can then train them up. Um, if they're still not getting it, also you got to think of is like, what type of leads are you giving them? Why are they not converting? There's a lot of different aspects, but that's something I had no idea even what that meant when I started. And I would truly say it's the most important thing you can focus on. Never tell a new agent how many escrows they need. Um, or how many sales, sorry, we call it escrow in California, um, but how many sales they need, what you need to focus on is how many dials or how many conversations they need daily and tracking that. And how do you, how do you keep them engaged with that? I mean, you just, you led a team to the highest number of sales in your area during a pandemic when you could not meet on a regular basis. How did you keep that communication going to keep them doing the right stuff? So I gamify everything. So I think this is maybe even the same book or even maybe another, but make things fun. Um, so what I have going on right now for the month of October is every working day. So Monday through Friday. Yes, I know real estate agents work seven days a week, but every working day we have to have uh, 21 points. And so it's kind of based off of my 100 point day, which um, tons of feedback on people love it. What I did was I took five different things. I took the conversations of new conversations so new people you're talking to, um, nurture conversations, the leads to follow up with, sphere of influence conversations, and then um, uh, videos, because we want our agents doing tons of video. And then the bonus point is an introduction to our lender or a review on our Google page for Porchlight. So each one of those things, we want five points in each category. So five new, five nurture, five sphere of influence, five video. Well, if they're not from San Diego and they don't have any sphere of influence, or if they don't have any nurturers because they're brand new, well, then it seems like they're going to have to have more new conversations. So instead of having five of each, they got to do 20 of the new ones. And they got to have that by the end of the day, and they got to log it plus their bonus point of a review, or they have to have it sent in for a, uh, 
uh, you know, a, a Google review or to the lender for a cross qualify or an introduction and they got to get 21 points. Well, that equals out to 441 points for the month of October. And if the people that are in my categories, I, I tier them on, on what they have to do. Um, not what they have to do, but what they should do. If they don't have 441 points and they're in the base category of foundation, meaning they're kind of like a newer agent or core, which means they sold less than four houses last quarter, then they're off the team. So if they don't do 441 points, that means they're not doing the leading indicators, you're off my team. So it's kind of, we do this every other month. We do a shit or get off the pot kind of deal. We had about 10 agents that were just kind of like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm like, don't tell me what you're going to do. Just do it and let your results speak for themselves. So we had those agents and I'm like, hey, we got to get these people off the team because they're costing resources. They're costing just morale. We got to get them out. So now every two months we do this, like any kind of random contest that I come up with it. That's, that's a powerful way to have people self-police themselves. And that also frees you up to do more of what you're good at. Um, so that's, that's a huge leverage point. Um, do you have anybody helping coach those agents? Because obviously you're not going to be coaching. How many agents do you have on your team right now? I believe around 90. Uh, my, my admin team just sent me a new agent right now. So I, I get these text messages that just say like, hey, this is the agent's information. So I just save them in my phone. Um, no, I do not lead them. I will actually, I'm going to look and see how many agents I have. So I have minus one, minus two. Okay, so I'm at 85 in San Diego. Um, so pretty big team. We have them tiered off. So if you reach a certain level of sales, you become mastery agent, which is my top tier of agents. That means they've done nine plus sales in the last quarter. So at the end of every quarter, which we just had our Q3 team meeting, so ended September, anyone who had nine or more sales became mastery. If you're in mastery, then you can be a mentor. Um, the mentors then get a percentage of each sale of the new agent stuff for the first five deals. We kind of have it chopped up a little bit more complicated than that, but just a summary of it is basically those agents that are experienced are helping the brand new agents. So actually the brand new agents don't even know who I am. That's I mean, that is kind of the, the, the point of building out a team is that you can get the freedom. That was the design, I would assume. Um, so I'm going to jump back to, you know, as you're building your business, what was the foundation? What was the core that, that gave you the security to continue to grow? Um, this is kind of ironic because my, my, my different tiers are called foundation and core, which you, you just use in those words. And then elite and mastery are my other two, the like next level and then the next level. Uh, but it's the elite and the mastery agents that allowed me to have the foundation of the core to basically build this out because it wasn't just me doing it. So I relied heavily on those mastery agents to basically help me move, move the needle forward. And I got their buy-in. No one ever wants to be told what to do. So I lead my corporation like, a, like, basically, I don't want to be the one saying, hey, I don't want to be told when I can have vacation or when I can do this or that. So I never tell my agents, you have to do this or you have to do that. If they don't show up to a team meeting, fantastic. If people don't show up to your team meetings, then provide more value so they do show up. It's, I'm never going to make someone show up to a team meeting. If someone has something, I don't even check in with them like, hey, where were you today? I don't do any of that because if they're not there, they're either working or they find your meetings boring. So... That's how I kind of run with it. Um, and, and that, I mean, we had a meeting yesterday. There was probably 60 people there out of 85. So, I mean, there's a, there were a lot of people there, but there were a lot of people missing. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, it's amazing um, having been in this industry for a long time. When we talk about, you know, large brokerages, I was a part of a brokerage that had, you know, 300 plus agents and only 40 to 55 people showed up on that weekly sales appointment, you know, that we would have that sales call and you're getting a higher turnout because of what you're providing value wise. Um, that's really, really awesome. So you're saying just to be clear, when you give the agents the freedom that they got into the business for and the platform that they can build a life that will fuel their life, they show up more. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. And even then, if they don't show up, I don't care. People have lives like real estate is not all of our lives mm -hmm. and things happen. A lot of my agents of the 25, one of them came back. She was like, sorry, I wasn't here, but I got a listing. And I was like, badass girl. Well, you know, keep kicking ass. What if I would have like texture been like, where are you? 
You know what yeah. I mean? That comes across as negative. Like as a leader, you should, tr- I mean, do you want people to come to your team meetings? Would I love it if all 85 were there? Sure. But I mean, even I sometimes are like, okay, these are getting kind of boring. Like we don't do a crazy amount of meetings because there's only so much we can teach. And I mean like all team meeting, like we do a weekly meeting with our new agents because there's a lot to teach them. But when you're having an agent that's in your office, that's doing $30 million a year, what do you teach her? Yeah, that's absolutely right. And um, the funny thing is the, 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 the girl who's closed 30 million so far this year, she was there front and center. <laughs> Well, isn't that interesting how the ones who show up and get the value get the results of what you share? Like, well, I mean, but my number two agent wasn't there, but then I did just see that he got a listing and it was a duplex. So I'm assuming he was at that appointment. Um, my number two agent wasn't there. My number three agent wasn't there. My number four was all the girls showed up, but the boys didn't basically is what I'm noticing right now. You still have that tracking there. Like you had them show up, they logged in in some capacity that you can see who was there. Like you're paying attention, but you're not judging. And one of my next questions is what kind of leader are you? Um, And I see you as somebody who leads without expectations, which is so incredibly difficult for a business that is based on like the Jim Jones group or the Betsy Thomas group. It's all about that lead agent. Why, why isn't it the Mark Patterson group? Um, people don't like, well, what I've heard from my agents and what I've heard from other agents who have a team name, that's like really in it. So like, for example, Dan beer is in our marketplace. His name's beer home team. I think it works for him because beer is kind of a cool last name. And it's just like, it's more like, it doesn't sound like Mark Patterson team. You know, it works. Same thing with Kyle whistle, whistle realty. I mean, he's been around the market. He's been here in this market. I think it was his dad's brokerage. So people knew of it. So I think it works for someone. Um, they don't run their team like the Kyle show or the Dan show. It is it is the beer home team. So I don't really think it matters about your name. I just think it's how it matters how you run as a leader. Um, I always think of it as like this is kind of a weird analogy, but if you're trying to get someone sober, you can't want it more than they want it themselves. Same thing in real estate you can't want their success more than they want it because it will never freaking happen. I think of it as like, don't put as a team leader, don't put all of your wishes into your agents thinking that they're going to be some rock star agent that you probably never were versus just like what parents do at freaking T-ball when they're screaming at their kid. You're like, okay, sir, you were never even a fucking varsity in baseball and you're yelling at your kid about T-ball. Like who cares? Like sports don't matter. Um, like have your kids in sports for fun and for commitment and for learning things. But when you stress them out like that, and that's how you got to realize with your team, like if your team is like always stressed around you or always stressed about the like end result, like you got to teach them to release, like don't have any stress about anything. I, I think you're one of the, one of the folks that I, I chat with that there's no real estate emergency. Um, like, we're not, we're not saving lives. We're just helping people get into the house. It's fine. And what's a, what's a common thing that people say is like, oh, I have to put out fires. There are no fires. <laughs> There's no fires. Do you know how many times you'll ever hear that I got to go put out fires in my real estate office? Zero, because all my agents, one, have never worked for really anyone else except for me. So oh. they don't know any of these like terms. And so mm-hmm. they're like, that term is never even said in my house or in my, my house, my, my yeah. office. But it is your house. Like, yes. I mean, during pandemic, you were running, you were running 30 to 50 people team meetings out of your living room. Like it's your house. This is your family. You yes. are right. <laughs> yep. And thankfully, uh, thankfully the Augusta law, I don't know if you ever heard of that one. Look it up. I'm not a tax accountant, but you can do some good write-offs for having events at your house. Um, uh, Yes. Up to $14,000 a year, tax-free income. Okay. There you go. So yeah, the uh, but yeah, running it like that, I, I think that's been our end result is we've created a culture of, of winning. Um, we've created a culture of travel. We've created a culture of diversity. We've created a culture that looks like our community. And, and it turns into a spot where people just want people to win because if you have that from the top, like the win mentality, we'll do anything to win as long as it's, you know, legal and ethical, we're good to go. I love that. Um, So for people who are looking to like get that, move into that, I'm going to lead my own team. I'm going to grow my own team. 
conversation, it comes down to leads. Like how do we secure a lead source that is dependable, dependable and reliable that you can kind of build your systems around? Well, it's nearly impossible because the wait list are thousands and thousands of people long. It's getting to know the people who are in control of the lead sources. So the lead sources that we work with, Zillow, Veterans United, and I'm not saying ones we pay for, these are referral based. So they come into us, we have good tracking, we've got good conversion. So we keep getting more and more leads. You can keep going that route. Um, trying to get them yourself is nearly impossible. So you have to partner with someone who already has that account, who's willing to give that city up, um, usually for a referral fee or for a, a situation. But that's truly the only way you're going to probably ever get those types of leads. The other thing that you could do on your own without having to go through a referral source or through a lead like this is going to be a, a massive farm. And you start out farming and then build off of it. But that's going to be another way that you're going to be able to truly convert a lot of leads and a lot of deals. But the thing is, your turnaround time is going to be probably nine months to even 18 months before you start getting an ROI. And you're going to put a lot of money in um, before you see a big return. So there's a big commitment that that's hard to build a team around early on if you're you know one year in the business like you are. Um, so if I'm looking at the JV uh, you know, joint venture with, with somebody who has big leads. How do I, how do I find that? How do I source that? Uh, one, I found a lot of my people where I gained a lot of my insight was through coaching. So like if you're part of a coaching company, um, Tom Ferry is the network that I'm part of people that are in Tom network or Tom Ferry's network. They have like a, a huge heart. Give, give, give. Uh, another one is EXP. Steve and I, you are both, we're both EXP brokerage. Uh, basically your success is my success. So that's another way. Um, and I would say it's, that's probably the best way in my opinion, because now we have some money involved of like, you know, I want you to do well because I get paid off of it. Uh, and then I would say just surrounding yourself with the right people. Once you get a good group from anything that you kind of establish, create a mastermind. I have a weekly or bi-weekly mastermind every, every other Thursday. I mean, these guys got private jets, they own banks. Like I'm the poorest person on the call, which is amazing. I'm just sitting there taking notes half the time. Like, and they're like, Oh, you're so smart, Mark. I'm like, I feel like an idiot, <laughs> but masterminds like getting people that are going to give everything, especially if you're younger or I mean like a mix, my guys on the mastermind call, they're like in their sixties. So they want to see me do well. So it's, it's getting in the right community. We're in the relationship business to help people sell houses. But also when we're trying to grow a team, it is a relationship business. What other great realtors are out there that we can learn from and other people outside of real estate, it sounds like, are informing you of how you're growing your business. What was the question you said? What other people outside of real estate? And there's, and I'm just kind of like surmising all this. It's let's go get community with top performing agents in networks and communities, whether it's through coaching or, you know, different organizations. And then also getting outside of the real estate space to, to have conversations about how to grow. Is that accurate? Yeah, for sure. What, what are you learning outside of the real estate space that's teaching you how to grow your business right now? Shit. I mean, everything I'm, I'm learning. I mean, like right now is uh, YouTube. So YouTube has been a big one for me recently. So I have uh, on my name right now, it's called Mark Patterson Show. If you go to YouTube, we're now starting to get leads and calls through there for, for listings and for buyers. And for, I had a girl, I was at a, I think it was at my grand opening. She came up to me and she was like, Hey, I want to introduce myself. Um, I found you on YouTube. And I was like, Oh really? She's like, yeah, I'm on your team now. So think about that. Like people are watching. And if you can have content out there that lives forever and we criticize ourselves and we'll say, Oh, only, 27 people watched that video from start to finish. And you're like, okay, well, 27 people watched your presentation from start to finish and you didn't get that. You didn't have to do anything. And, and that lives on there forever. So you can mm -hmm. repurpose it. You can do other things. So YouTube is a huge one for sure. And how long have you been dialed in and focusing on that? Uh, like a month and a half, maybe. So in a month and a half, you've already gotten an agent who can perform and opportunities for listing. So it's just a matter of showing up there. Um, you taught me that stop thinking about it, start doing about it, get into action. Um, 
what helps you do that? Because I mean, we, we overthink on a regular basis. What is your trick to get past that? Uh, I mean, just think about it. it it's, it's, I don't think about it too much actually, uh, <laughs> but biggest thing is, is your perfect or my done is better than your perfect. That's not done or whatever this heck saying is, because you can sit there and make, is my shit perfect? Do you want to see my notes from my coaching call today? Which by the way, it has a cough drop on it. It's got, this is one coaching call today. This is another coaching call today. This is another coaching call I did the other day. Mind you, this is on a pro forma of a, of an escrow company. I'm starting. Um, dude, my life's a freaking mess, but do I care? Nope. I don't care because it's, it'll all work out and just taking action and moving forward and implementing, there's always going to be more, but if yeah. you move forward and like, I don't know how, how I can say like, okay, so say you go to a conference and you take a bunch of notes, take them into a, take them notes on like a format that you can edit easily. So like in either Trello or somewhere and then reorganize them in order of a priority and then assign them to the right people. So if you go through and you're going to organize who, who needs to do what, Trello makes that super easy. So then if you have 30 to-do lists and you've got two admin staff or you've got a virtual assistant, you can assign those virtual assistants, those items, and then they can bring it back to you. And you can meet with them on Monday and then meet with them again on Friday. You can have a check-in, see what they did right, see what they did wrong, meet again on Monday again, do the same thing. And then all of a sudden, all these to-dos are just getting chopped away. So getting in action is one part Mark, Mark's doing it, but the other part is you're, you're using your resources within your team to leverage your time. Yeah. But if it, when it was just me, it was just me. So it was doing the same thing. I could only do so many things, but you got to realize when it was just me, I was able to take action and implement shit way faster because I wasn't having to correct anyone or train anyone. So, but now I'm at the scale. I can't do everything that needs to be done. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Um, so one last process system, what your systems, what is the linchpin? What is the thing that holds it together? What is the key resource that you use for your business um, to keep organized? Uh, to keep organized? Shit, nothing. I don't have anything that keeps me organized. I... You are the prime example of growth is messy, but messy growth is better than not starting. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not organized at all. I mean, I've got Sometimes I put stuff in my backpack for like a month and then I'm like, oh, I should probably go through my backpack. I'm like, oh, uh oh, the weird thing is I have an 840 credit score. <laughs> so I'm never late on that because my shit's on auto pay. But if we didn't have auto pay, but I put it on my calendar too. So I go in and I check all my payments every single freaking month, like making sure that none of the auto pays turned off. Um, I'm not going to rely on them. So, but no, that's, that's truly like, there's no way that you could ever be better. Because I mean, I definitely need to figure out a way, but I just don't think that it's possible for me. Okay. Trello, Trello is going to be my best thing that keeps things systematized. I, I'm I'm in love with Trello. It's it's good to organize and categorize everything. Um, what I like to do at the end of a call is do our final three. Kind of wraps up everything. Um, so three questions. What is the most memorable piece of advice you ever got about growing your business? Mark, you're thinking too small. Chuck Fazio, Phoenix, Arizona. He's a fucking badass. So what, what inspired that? Like, what was the thing that you got from that, that you get put into action immediately? So he said, uh, I, he goes, Hey, are you Mark? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, this is at a conference. And he goes, Oh, I, I watch you on, on social media. And he goes like this. He's an older guy. He's like, you're thinking too small. <laughs> it's like, he goes, how many agents do you have on your team? I was like 15. He goes, I want you to have 200 on your team. And I was like, okay. He goes, I was like, why 200? He goes, how much are you going to make? And I was like, I don't know, 2 million. And he goes, why don't you want to make 10 million? And I literally was like, genius. Then I found out he had 3000 agents at his brokerage. Amazing. Yeah. I love <laughs> there's a random person you just met and he said, you can do better because again, you're surrounding yourself with elite thinkers and elite action takers. It really comes back to that community of who's informing your information uh, so you can make better decisions. Uh, question number two, what is the book event or group that has had the largest impact on your growth? I would say Tom Ferry group for sure for coaching, uh, but book million dollar real estate team. It's Bradley pounds and Chris waters by waters international. They own a brokerage in Texas. Um, so it's called million dollar real estate team. 
Awesome. All right. If you and I were to sit down and have this call a year from now, what major goal will you be able to say that you accomplished? I will have 200 agents on my team by June 1st. By June 1st. Okay. And what about in five years? I don't know about that. Yeah. I can't, I can't think that far ahead, but I for sure will have a thousand, I think. Awesome. I love that. Uh, Mark Patterson, such a great opportunity to chat with you and get to know you a little bit more and a little more about your business. How do people get in touch with you uh, if they want to learn more about uh, Porch Light San Diego? I would say DM me, uh, Instagram. That's going to be the easiest. Mark Patterson show. And then also on, if you look up on YouTube as well, uh, you can follow all the information on there. If you want to watch a couple of the videos, just get some info. Awesome. We'll make sure that there's links for everything we talked about in the description. Uh, Mark, thank you so much. Uh, I'm honored that I'm in your world and that I get to learn from you. Thank you so much. And just a shout out to you. Uh, I was in a low point life-wise uh, less than a year ago. And I went from basically no production to now having, we added our fourth person to the team this, this month. Um, we are going to be on track. It's not huge numbers, like 15 million and we're going to have over 40 transactions, but to go from basically zero to that by your tutelage and by your uh, systems and process in the community I get to hang with, I mean, quite literally changed my life and I'm forever grateful for you. So thank you. Uh, and thank you for being our guest on Grow With Porchlight. I love that. Yeah, dude, you guys are awesome. You guys keep me, you keep me chugging along to where I'm like, oh shit, I just got to keep providing value. <laughs> Awesome. And you keep doing that. So thank you. Uh, stick around. Check out Mark Pattison, Mark Pattison show on all the socials. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Steve Shane, your friend and favorite real estate coach. We'll see you soon.